Hey guys, for those of you that don't know me, I ended Challenger in the last four sets. And after playing a lot of PvE, I created a list of the strongest early game boards you could play in set 7.5. So in this set, there are three types of early game boards you could play. I've classified them based on their items. The first type of early game board revolves around a bruiser carry, where you build items like BT, Titans, Hodge, and eventually you would try to transfer over these items onto late game carries like Shioyu, Siphon, Yasuo, and Pantheon. The next type of board revolves around Gwinsu's. This is what is going to be called the attack speed tree. You're going to be playing around an early game carry that uses Gwinsu's really, really well, and then building your board around that unit. In late game, you could transfer over those items onto one of these carries. And finally, there's going to be the AP tree. In this set, there are a lot more late game AP options you could play. Itemization is around the same. You generally still want Archangels to scale because we have units like Al Shin and Aesol. And you still want Shiv because it's such an early game item and it shreds MR, so it scales pretty well into late game as well. Blue buff and Shoujin aren't really necessary for a lot of these dragons but there are a lot of good early game options to hold them and i've listed them here with that being said let's go right into the bruiser boards so first let's go through the jade boards the three core jade units are going to be karma wukong and Jax. Jax is going to be your main tank and karma is going to be your holder of ap items whereas wukong will hold all your bruiser items Alternatively, you don't have to stack Wukong, you could also play Set, because Set holds these items pretty well as well. It completely depends on who you two-star early. And another great unit that you could play instead of Set could be something like Yone. Yone is also a pretty good item holder for Titans and BT and all the Bruiser items as well. Another variation you could play could be around Shapeshifters instead. Your third J unit could be Gnar, and because you're playing Gnar, you could play Nidalee. And Nidalee is a pretty good holder of both Bruiser and Attack Speed items. So for example, BT and Titans is good on her. You could also put Gwinsu's plus 2 on her. And for all your tank items, you probably put it on Lee Sin. Honestly, Lee Sin is actually a pretty good holder of BT and Titans as well if you solo frontline him, as long as he gets the Dragon Mancer buff. Because Titans scales really well the more HP your unit has. The last main Jade variation is going to revolve around Shimmer Scale. If you guys notice, Jax is both a Jade and a Shimmer Scale unit. So now usually when you're playing Shimmer Scale, you usually always want to play Jade. And this is probably going to be your most common early game Shimmer Scale variation. All your tank items are going to go on Jax, and then all your AP items are going to go on Karma. A lot of the Shimmer Scale items like Dragon Mancer stuff is really really good on Volley Bear as well. Another variation to the Jade Shimmer Scale board is going to be something like the following. In this case, you could also add in two more units like Olaf and Braum. And then this would end up making your mid-game board pretty strong as well. The last Bruiser early game variation is going to revolve around four Dragon Mancer. In this case, you could stack your Titans and your BT on your Lee Sin. He's a really, really good tank with four Dragon Mancer in. And then for your fifth unit, you could just round out your synergies with a random Kiana for Tempest. You could also play a second random Rage Wing like Senna, or if you could find the Rakan, that'd be pretty good too. Additionally, if you get a Dragon Mancer Spat, this will allow you to play 6 Dragon Mancer, which scales really, really well into late game because you can just Dragon Mancer your carry. And then it's also going to make your early and mid game insane because your Lee Sin is just going to be unkillable. So next, I'm going to go through all the early game boards for the attack speed tree. One main unit you want to play around for attack speed items is going to be Yone, since he's one of the best item holders for Gwinsu's. And if you're playing around Yone, it's the exact same as last set. You want to play around Sejuani and Nunu. For your second warrior, you can just play Wukong, and then you can just play a random Twitch for guild. Another variation instead of Wukong and Twitch is you could technically also play Olaf and Lilia instead. This gives you three calves and also gives you Scale Scorn and Warrior. And if you're not playing Nunu, since Nunu is a three cause, you could just play around a Leona. Preferably, you want to two star your Leona, or your frontline will be too weak. And if you're playing Leona, you want to play around Braum. And then if you're playing Braum, you could just play Olaf to round out your synergies. Yone is generally a pretty smooth transition into any attack speed endgame board like Zaya because you're usually playing Sejuani. And you could also play around Deja because you're already holding a lot of Cavaliers and Mirage units. Another way you could play around attack speed early game is playing around Twitch. If you're playing Twitch, you want Sejuani as well, and then you want a second Swift Shot like Ezreal, and because your frontline is weak with just Sejuani, you want a second tank, so Lee Sin is pretty good because he gives you Tempest as well. In this case, you want to stack all your attack speed items on your Twitch and all your tank items on your Lee Sin. This is a very, very easy transition into Zaya because Zaya plays around both Twitch and Sejuani. The other variation to this is by playing around just Twitch and a Cavalier frontline. In this case, you're just dropping all your units for two more Cavaliers. So next up is going to be playing around Senna. Uh, so in set 7.5, there's a big difference in Rage Wing. Uh, the breakpoints are going to be 2, 4, 6, and 8. There really only are 3 Rage Wing units you could reliably get early game. The 4th Rage Wing is gated behind Hecarim. So you're never going to be playing around 4 Rage Wing early. This means that you're going to be playing around either Set, which means you have to play around Dragon Mancer. If you're playing around Dragon Mancer, you want to play either Karma or Lee Sin. Karma gives you more AP damage, whereas Lee Sin makes your frontline more tanky. The other variation to set is if you happen to find a Rakan, 
which I believe is the stronger variation because Rakan is just a broken unit. If you get a Rakan early game, it allows your Rage Wing units to scale and it solves your problem of lacking a front line. And it also lets you play a second Guardian as well, like Leona, which enables you to play something like Yone to add a bit more damage to your team. Something like this. So finally, I'm going to run through the AP boards. I think AP in this set, it's still going to be pretty similar where you're going to be playing around Archangels and Shiv because the highest cap boards are still going to be around Aesol or Aoshin. All of these units could generally use these two items, except for maybe Lee Sin. One of the most common early game boards you can play is going to be around 3 Lagoon, and the 3 core units are going to be Malphite, Talia, and Kaisa. Again, you want to build Shiv and Archangels if you get them. One thing to note is that Talia is a better holder of Shoujin, while Kaisa is a better holder of Blue Buff. And when you're building your early game and mid game boards, you want to angle your board in a way such that you could build towards a board like this. I think this is one of the stronger variations of your mid game Lagoon board. You're playing Silas because 3 Mage is really, really broken with Silas. And then you have a very good combination of all these support units in the back. So, because of how Lagoon works, you have two choices at this point. You could either play around Vertical Lagoon and try to farm as much gold and items as possible from the trait, or you could use the extra econ you got from playing 3 Lagoon early game fast 8 and then play into an 8 cost dragon like Aoshin or Aesol. So next I'm going to be talking about Astral. Astral is very very similar to Lagoon in the sense that they're both econ traits and you could also play vertical Astral to farm a lot of gold and items. If you're playing the Astral board early game, you want to stack your Lux instead with Shiv and Archangels. The ideal level 4 setup is going to be something like this, but Silas is usually going to be a bit harder to find, so in this case you just drop this for another mage instead. Maybe something like Lilia, and then if you're playing this, you could just play a Sejuani. So one unique thing about Astral is that the next Astral breakpoint that gives you more rewards is going to be at level 7. And because you could only reach a maximum of 6 if you 2 star your 3 Astral units, you could reach that next breakpoint by just adding a 4th Astral unit even though it doesn't directly give you another synergy. At times it's going to be worth it to econ a bit harder to get to level 8. Astral could also be played through the AD variant as well if you want to play econ early. In this case you're playing around Nidalee instead and then you want to play a second Shapeshifter because Nidalee is your carry. And again, same concept, because you're playing an econ trait, your early game is going to suffer a bit. You're going to be able to hit level 8 a bit earlier than everyone else to spike and hit your dragons. Aside from the two main AP early game boards like Lagoon and Astral, which are more econ based, there are other stronger early game variations that are less econ based but stronger early game. I already went over Yone, but I just wanted to remind you guys that Yone is actually a fantastic holder of all the AP items. And if you're playing Yone, it's usually going to be a Deja pivot, and Deja is a very viable late game carry. The other AP early game board you play revolves around Volibear and Karma. You could stack either of them. If you get a 2-star Karma, you could stack Karma. If it is a very good Shimmer Scale item, and you have very good Volibear items like Gwinsu's, Archangels, Titans, QSS, you could stack your Volibear instead. And this board plays into the 8 cost dragons very very well, because you're typically going to hit level 8 earlier than everyone else, because you're going to be playing around a Shimmer Scale item. So this sums up my set 7.5 early game guide. Because all this information was drawn from PBEN streams, it might get outdated after 2 or 3 weeks. In the next few days, once set 7.5 goes live, I'll be playing a lot of games and releasing my first flex guide for the set. So if you're interested in that, please subscribe to my channel so you can get updated. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you guys next time.